Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss how you can publish message in an SQS queue from step functions. Okay, and this particular concept can be very useful. Just consider a scenario like suppose you have built one finite state machine using step function and one particular request your state machine is not able to process or your step function is not able to process after certain retry also okay then that particular request you can publish in a dead letter queue from the dead letter queue you can send notification to the admin team or developer team and they can come and check what's the issue going on with that particular request okay so whenever we are working with step function it is very handy to know how to publish the message in an SQS queue from step function okay and again this particular concept also I am going to explain in a very simple way with drag and drop approach okay so first step what we will do we will go to SQS and we will be creating a queue okay so you can consider this as data data queue or whatever a normal queue also fine so here demo step to SQS some name I am giving and then here I will create the queue okay here my queue is created as of now you can see that zero messages are there okay so i will open aws management console in a new tab and then here i will go to step function okay and i will create a new step function and i will design workflow visually i will choose standard and then here i will go to next okay what i will do here i will search for sqs okay and see here lot of different drag and drop options you will be getting related to SQS and step function integration. So generally we focus on sending message from SQS to step function. Like I have told you this scenario right that is after certain retry also if your step function is not able to process that request it will send that to TLQ. So that kind of scenario you just consider. So here you can see SQS send message. Now here certain inputs you need to configure like queue URL. I can basically take the queue URL whatever we have created just now and then here message. Okay, so message what we can do if you want you can click on edit JSON and then here also you can type the message. So here you can see here we are sending basically one JSON data where message body it is taking from our input. Okay, and as I have already discussed in our previous video that whenever you are taking in the parameter section dynamically then not only here you need to put dollar but in the variable also at the end you have to put dot dollar and that's what is written here also must be a valid json to reference a node in the states json the key must end with dot dollar okay so here this is our key that is ending with dot dollar that's fine okay so this is our simple step function to publish the message in sqs queue i will go to next and then here what i will do i will go to next and my state machine demo sqs some name i am giving and then here i will create this state machine okay very simple now what we will do is start the execution so maybe i can give comment is the first one and here i can give one key as hello and the value as world okay and i will start the execution so here you will see it is successful so if it is successful what should happen we should go to SQS and if I refresh this page here you will see message available is 1. If I click on that and then I will click on send and receive messages and then here I will go to poll for messages and here one message we are getting. And see here comment insert your JSON here and another key is hello and the value is world. That's what we are getting right. That's perfectly fine. But there is one more important point which I already covered in my previous video while discussing how we can send messages in SQS queue from Python Boto 3. That is, if you see the message body is one of the important part, apart from that the attribute section is also there, okay, which you can use to filter or process your message without actually processing the body part. In the attribute section itself, you can configure some key value pair. One part should be name, that is the key name, then the type, data type of that key and the value part. These three components, each attribute should be having, right? So now let's see how we can introduce this component that is attribute component in a message if we are sending from SQS queue. Okay, that also we need to understand. Okay, so for that if you check this particular documentation here it is clearly written call Amazon SQS with step function here detailed explanation is there. So if you just observe this particular JSON how they are configuring here they have written the technique. Okay, 
the key how you should pass the attribute that is basically termed as message attributes okay and then here you can pass see how we are passing first is the key name okay then here data type data type can be string and what other data types possible if you check my previous video here clearly i have discussed data type can be binary or number or string okay these are the possible data type values we can put and then here in the value part the key should be string value or what value binary value okay so value can be one of string value or binary value so that also we can put and then here actual value we can configure okay so let me just copy this particular component and show you how to add the message attribute so i will go to step function i will go to my state machine and i will go to edit and workflow studio i'll be going i will click on that i will make that bigger i will edit the json and here this is our that is q url and then here i will be pasting the attribute section okay so here my attributes maybe i can give the name as attribute one demo okay and another attribute i can put as attribute two demo okay let me put one underscore also to make differentiate okay so currently here you can see both the attributes are string type we are sending and that's why we are putting here string value okay so here i will just click on apply and exit and i will save this one okay save anyway and here it is saved now what i will do i will start the execution okay so here as of now let's put the body part as it is whatever there and we'll start the execution and here see it is successful okay if we go to sqs and here send and receive messages all for messages if we do here we will be getting two message if i click on the latest one the body part is coming as it is if we go to attribute section here you can see attribute one demo and attribute two demo is coming data type is string and value part whatever we have passed that only it is coming okay that is perfectly fine let me show you with one number data attribute type i will just go to edit and workflow studio i will select this component i will edit the json and i'll make this bigger and here what i will do maybe suppose this one i want to send as age okay so age is generally number so i will just put number data type and the value can be 10 okay don't put here number value very important because the value can be clearly i have discussed value can be either string value or binary value like this should be key what you have to pass you cannot simply pass here number value see i have written number value right now what i will do i will go to apply and exit and if i try to save here i will be getting error the field number value is not supported in step function okay so here what i will do we have to make sure although the data what we are sending that can be number data type but the value when we will be sending that we should be sending as string value only okay that's the catch which i already discussed earlier also so instead of number value this time i'll be sending this as string value okay this for value the key can be string value or binary value and the data type can be number string binary among these three anything is possible okay but make sure if you are sending the data type as number then also here you should be using string value right so maybe the attribute one uh, name i can give as name and the value part i can put as number okay and age is 10 suppose that's the attribute what we want to send to this particular queue okay message body it will be taking from our step function input okay so i'll click on apply and exit and i will save this okay so see this time it saved successfully i will start the execution okay comment i can give as maybe final demo okay and i will start the execution and if i go back to our sqs queue and then here i will go to poll for messages here we'll be getting the latest one let me click see comment is final demo whatever body part we said that is only coming in the attribute section age is coming as number data type and name is coming as string data type okay so this way now we got a clear picture how to publish messages from step function to an sqs queue including passing attributes okay so i hope you understood this and try to use this kind of step function and sqs integration as a dlq in your 
ETL pipeline or data processing pipeline, okay? And then you will be understanding the real power of the direct integration. See, here you can do this way also. That is step function will trigger lambda. That lambda will publish the message in SQSQ using Boto3 and all this stuff. But if we can remove the presence of lambda, that is kind of optimized. Here direct integration itself is possible, right? So then we should be following the direct integration instead of via lambda. Approach, okay? That's why I thought to cover this topic. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you.